I brought this cross into this service tonight to conclude because the man who built it is in this room. But it's more than just a cross that's been built. Many years ago, I feel a revival about to happen. Many years ago, while the congregation was not in this building but in the chapel that was called the sanctuary at the time, a phone call came in the middle of the night. Came to the parsonage, Brother Lowry got up, called for Brother Zepp to join him. Somebody was at the hospital at Sacred Heart and they needed to come. That call was made to get them on the road in the middle of the night because this church had been bussing in children from the projects, black, white, Hispanic, and the like, thousands, feeding, teaching, loving, caring. And the KKK didn't like it. And so they put a hit out on Reverend Lowry. And their plan was to get him to drive down Scenic Highway. And they would push him off of the cliff. That night, Brother Lowry and Brother Zepp drove to Sacred Heart Hospital only to find out that the person they were coming to see was not there. They got in their car and started making their way back to Pace and Brother Lowry said, let's take the turn. You better listen to the Holy Ghost when he speaks. He said, let's take the turn and go by West Florida Hospital and see if they happen to be there. Taking the turn off of Scenic Highway caused them to go a different direction. And because of that, they came back home unscathed and not even knowing what had been planned for their destruction. One of the men who was a part of that group of KKK people who said, we're gonna take them out because of this, because they love another race. Who was the enforcer for the state of Florida in the Ku Klux Klan? Said, I'll not have a part of it. You're not gonna to touch this man of God. I'm out. And as I understand it, within days, took his KKK uniform and walked into that chapel with it in his hand. And under the anointed preaching of our great emeritus pastor, Brother Lowry, walked down the altar and laid that cloak on the altar and gave his life to Jesus Christ 37 years ago. You want the answer to racism? America, stop stoking the fires of a false narrative and the fake news and start listening to the voice of God and there will be reconciliation and there will be a revival in America if you'll stand for truth. Thirty-seven years ago, it's been 37 years since this man has come back to Pace Assembly. He lives in another, in another county. But he surrendered his life that night. And from that time, he's lived for Jesus Christ and renounced his racist ideology. And tonight, this cross stands here because this man built this cross. He said, I no longer burn the cross, I build crosses. I'm glad to invite to this platform tonight a friend of this ministry and a man who gave his life 37 years ago to Jesus Christ and said no more of that for me. 
Would you let this man who's had a transformation in his life 37 years ago know from this church that one God sets free is free indeed. I want you to know, not only does God love you, but you told me back there in that green room that if it hadn't been for the Lord who had saved your life, you'd be a dead man tonight. Amen. Long ago. Long ago. Long ago. But he built a cross. A few weeks ago, I was preaching, and I said, I hope I don't offend anybody. And I started making statements concerning racism in America and how it set its bullseye upon the church to divide and conquer. After that Wednesday night service, Brother LeGerald came to me. <laughs> he said, Pastor, you stop apologizing. I know your heart, and I know this church, and we're standing with you. Tonight, if America wants to see revival, let him come to the cross and let him come to the cross and watch what God can do when two men come together and say we will serve the Lord. Oh my God, get on your feet and celebrate what God has done and will do for the glory of God. You're watching what America needs for revival. You're seeing right now what it's going to take. Not more hate speech. Not more hate and, and anger towards one another. But two individuals who will meet at the cross of Jesus and be part of the body of Christ. We need revival in America. How many of you would agree that the message of the cross is what it's going to take to see it happen? I ask these two men if they would be strong and bold to come tonight to make their stand publicly so that others and our children, come on somebody, and our children and our children's children can see what real love is all about. Pray, Brother Lowry. Hallelujah to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your divine provision. No matter where we are, or what we've come through, or what we're going through, our God is able to make us one in Him, Christ Jesus. We're so thankful for the blood of the Lamb that can change every heart and every mind and every soul. If men will surrender to God and women will surrender to God, He can make all things new. He can turn things around. He can set your feet on the right foundation. And He can put a love in your heart that this world did not give you and the world cannot take it away from you. We thank you for the love of Calvary. We thank you for the love of Calvary. We're all recipients of that love. And we thank you that it goes to every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that will come to Jesus and open their heart. Oh, hallelujah. Give God. Lift your hands and bless the Lord this very night. God is going to send a revival to Pace Assembly because of what just happened in this auditorium. If you believe it, somebody give him shouts of praise tonight. Get on your feet and give God the glory that is rightfully deserving him.